My name is Steve Reiners. I'm a, the professor and chair of horticulture here at Cornell University. My specialty is uh, vegetable crops, so I work with a wide variety of them. And of course, this time of year, my favorite crop to work with is going to be pumpkins. When you're going out to a, get your pumpkin, a couple of things that you want to look for. You want to have one that has a good stem or a handle, which is what we call this. And you can feel this one, and you can see how, how stiff that stem is. It's not really able to move very much as compared to this one, which again is more of a papery. It's actually falling apart in my hand. And the difference between these two is that some plant diseases, probably mildew, could get down into the stem, and this pumpkin might rot much sooner than this one that has this really good stem. So that's something you want to look for. You also, of course, want to look to make sure that there's no soft spots on the pumpkin uh, when you're buying it. Um, again, if there are any soft spots, that's a plant disease. You don't want to bring that home. It will rot very quickly. Now, once you do get the pumpkins home, um, if you leave them like this without cutting them, without making a jack-o'-lantern, a good pumpkin like this can easily last through Thanksgiving. You could keep it outside. Um, a light frost wouldn't bother the pumpkin. Uh, if it's a very, very deep freeze, you might want to bring those into the garage at that point. But again, they can last quite a while outside if you're starting with a good material. If you're making a jack-o'-lantern though, be aware that once you cut this pumpkin open and start cutting and cutting it like that, it will open it up for a lot of rots and disease to get in there. So once you carve that pumpkin, you probably only have about five to, to maybe seven days before it would just start to rot. So if you want that jack-o'-lantern for Halloween, you, know, you want to do it just really a few days before, uh, before Halloween to make sure that that's going to be okay and will be really perfect for the holiday. You know, I have these sort of standard pumpkins. Again, these are relatively small. And if you wanted to buy a pumpkin for making a pie, or a pumpkin bread, this is the type of pumpkin that you'd want to get. It's a small, what we call a pie pumpkin. The large jack-o'-lantern type is not going to be the best for doing any cooking with. Again, they're, they're bred to be ornamentals and not for eating. But I've also got some other things here too, and a lot of people, um, I've got some things here that are gourds, and they're all different types that you can see, and, and some are absolutely beautiful and, and, and really stunning. And again, we see more and more growers growing these. And this one, um, I've got this as a, an example that's becoming very, very popular. It's a, it's a warted pumpkin, so it has all these wart-like parts on the, on the on the fruit. And uh, you know, I've been working with pumpkins now for about 30 years, and it used to be whenever we would see one little wart on a pumpkin, a pumpkin was unmarketable, nobody wanted to buy it. Seed companies, breeders were always very careful to make sure that they were breeding that trait out of their, out of their pumpkins. And about 15 years ago, um, people started looking for this. And now I'm just amazed when I go to a farm stand, when I go visit a grower, He's got probably 25, 30% of all the pumpkins that they're growing have this sort of warty trait to it as well. So that has been a huge change and, and one that we're seeing just in the last few years.